Welcome to the Talk Like a Leader podcast, where we explore the mindset, skill set, and habit set of leadership communication. Using these tips, techniques, and tactics, you'll be able to talk like a leader to build better relationships and get more done. Your host is Guy Harris, who has more than 20 years of combined professional and military experience in consulting, coaching, and training in areas like team and interaction dynamics, communication strategies and tactics, as well as emotional intelligence. Take it away, Guy. Hi, this is Guy Harris. Welcome to Talk Like a Leader. This week's episode is titled, Three Steps for Handling a Persistently Negative Team Member. One fairly common question I get from Bud the Boss workshop participants, either in the direct workshop time or in follow-up coaching conversations, is phrased something like this. Guy, how do you deal with a persistently or sometimes aggressively negative team member? And I have to admit, the the full answer to any given situation depends on lots of situation-specific details. There's company culture to consider. There's employee history to consider. There's other team dynamics that aren't specific to this person but are specific to the overall team to consider. There's a lot going on here. And even though there's a lot going on, I'll say that there's a thread of three common themes I found apply to most of both my personal experiences with the issue and as I've worked with other people and seen how they've dealt with it or had the opportunity to walk with them through dealing with the situation. So I'll share those three common threads with you as a way to at least get started if you're confused or frustrated by this persistently or possibly aggressively negative team member. The three ideas are to, one, listen to their story, two, ask them to define a problem they see that you can solve together, and three, ultimately, to invite them to help you solve the problem. Now, let me comment on each of those three parts of the process. One, listen to their story. I remember reading years ago Patrick Lencioni's book, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team, And he makes the point, this isn't a direct quote, it's a paraphrase of what he said, that reasonable, rational people don't really need to get their way as much as they need to be heard and understood. I have to say that my experience matches his his statement. That in most cases, the frustration, the negativity, the aggressive negativity that I see in people is an attempt to be heard. It's not so much that they're frustrated that, they, that their ideas weren't acted on. It tends to be more that their frustration or irritation or the problem that they've attempted to identify wasn't listened to and wasn't understood fully. So the first step I found is that if you will listen to the person, at least to the point of being able to show them that you understand fully the frustration they see, or the frustration they experience, that's a great first step in turning around or at least blunting the persistent or aggressive negativity. If you can't necessarily solve all of their problem, you can at least position yourself as the person who's willing to listen to their problem. Step one, listen to their story. Step two, ask them to define a problem they see that you can solve, actually solve together. And the solve together part is really critical. If you listen to their frustration, the situations that get them worked up, or maybe the the topic of the day for today, it might, or actually maybe likely, has grown to the point that the things they talk about, the frustrations they express, the complaints they have, are about things that neither you nor they can control. And in many cases, that's because it has grown to that level of frustration not that it started there. The process of turning this frustration around is to attempt to bring the things we're talking about back into the range of things that we can control, to direct our efforts to things that we can make a difference in. So if you can engage them in defining a problem, either they define it or you help them define it with them, a problem that the two of you can work on solving together you're taking another step towards turning the negativity around. So first, you have to listen to their story to understand their frustration and concern. And then two, you want to 
engage with them in a way to identify a problem that is in yours and their control to address. And then the third step is to invite them to help you solve the problem. The idea here is to involve them in the problem-solving process. There are a couple of reasons, really. One is that if they're involved in the solution, they're more likely to buy into it. If it's a solution they propose, good chance they'll like the solution. Secondly, if they're involved in the solution, they will firsthand be involved in the implementation and also observing the results. So this firsthand observation of results is important because it gives them a chance to actually see progress rather than to hear about it from you. Now, both involvement in the solution or buy-in and seeing progress are critical elements to turn around or at least blunt to soften the persistent or aggressive negativity. In summary, the three key steps you can take to start the process of turning around negativity is to one, listen to their story until you are sure that they feel like you understand it. Two, work with them or ask them to define a problem they see that the two of you can work on solving together that is within your sphere of control. And then three, invite them into the problem-solving effort. Give them the tools, resources, and time necessary to do what they can do to solve the problem. And likewise, do what you can do to solve the problem. So that together you're working on solving a problem. So you've, had, you've positioned yourself as a person who's willing to listen to and understand their concerns. You've positioned yourself as a person who has helped them to verbalize the problem they see and scale it back to something you can address. You can focus your energy in areas where you can actually make a difference. And then you've participated with them in solving the problem. If you'll do those three things, I think what you'll find is that you might not necessarily eliminate their negativity. You know, frankly, I've noticed that some people kind of like to be negative. And it's actually not my attempt, not my effort, not really my desire to change their core perspective. This is how they approach life. And while I would personally be happier if I don't have a negative perspective, maybe they're perfectly happy that way. It's not my desire to completely change their perspective, although it, I'd love it if we could get there. It is my objective to get to a, a place of at least not aggressively negative. And what I've noticed that while you might need to do things in addition to the three things I've suggested here, these are three powerful ideas that will move you in the direction of at least not aggressively negative. Now, if you'll do this consistently and persistently, you might actually turn things around to get to positive. I also have to say as a reality check that I have experienced situations, I have worked with leaders who have experienced situations that even after doing all of these things and, and more, we were not successful in, quote, turning around a situation that the person involved, the persistently or aggressively negative team member remained persistently and aggressively negative, which opened a whole different conversation that extends beyond the scope of this week's podcast. So I, I don't propose that these three steps will magically fix every single situation you will ever face. I have seen that they work most of the time with most people, and it's a pretty good starting point. If you can position yourself as a leader who is able to listen to and understand your team members' concerns and frustrations, if you are able to help them define problems that are within your circle or your sphere of control, yours and theirs together, if you can find ways to invite them, empower them, equip them to help you solve the problems they see, you can talk like a leader. This has been the Talk Like a Leader podcast. You can listen to this show every week wherever you get your podcast. If you haven't, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. I'm Guy Harris, and thanks for listening.